In this third video on my portable suitcase series, I will discuss options for installing the portable solar system in your RV. If you've not watched video 1 or 2 yet, I recommend doing so as each video is a continuation of the previous videos. This video will actually be in two parts. Part 1 is why it is so, and part 2 is how it's done. With part 1, the video that you're watching now, it will be slightly technical. If you don't want to listen to the technical discussion, then skip to part 2 of video 3. However, I do recommend you watch this video as I will present the information in an easy to understand format. A solar charge controller is basically a battery charger. In this discussion, I will be using the terms charge controller and battery charger interchangeably. When a flooded, that is vented, lead acid battery is 100% charged, it will have an open circuit voltage of 12.6 volts DC. When it is fully depleted with 0% charge, the voltage will be around 11.8 volts DC. So between charged and discharged, we have less than a volt change in the battery. Now other batteries such as lithium, AGM, and so on have similar voltages, but we'll just use a lead acid battery for the example. If you recall from video one, a typical smart charger has three states, bulk, absorption, and float. Each of these states has a different voltage associated with it. The bulk charge has the highest voltage, followed by the absorption charge, and with the float charge having the lowest voltage. The smart charger will enter the appropriate charge state depending on the voltage that it reads from the battery, and thus it will adjust its charge current accordingly. You should now realize that both the battery and charger voltages only vary about a volt or so between the charged and discharged states. The important point is that the maximum current that can be delivered to the battery will be done in the bulk charge, a lower current will be delivered in the absorption charge, and the lowest current will be delivered in the float charge state of the charge controller. Concept 2. The amount of charge current the battery receives is dependent on the charge state of the controller. And you should be able to infer that the higher charge current will charge your battery faster the lower charge current will charge the battery slower. There are, of course, three necessary components required to charge a battery. The battery itself, the charger, and the connecting wires. To charge the battery, current must flow from the charge controller to the battery, then return to the charge controller. Current flow is defined as the movement of electrons through a wire. This is actually an electromechanical process. When the electrons flow through the wire, they encounter friction or resistance. The more the electrons that flow through the wire, the higher the friction becomes. This requires a higher voltage to push the additional current through the wire. In fact, we can classify this phenomenon by treating a wire like a resistor. Concept 4. The longer the wire and the higher the current, the more voltage will be lost along the wire. To prevent this voltage drop, you must either reduce the length of the wire or increase the size of the wire. You may have seen published tables showing the maximum amount of current that a wire can pass. This is of little use for handling voltage drop issues. The voltage drop issue will occur long before the maximum current point is reached. We just spent three minutes going through all kinds of theory about wire and voltage drops and maybe you probably don't even care, but we're going to put it together now. Remember in video 1 that I said that suitcase solar kits typically come with 10 feet of cable with battery clips on the end. And in video 2 I stated that you should use 15 foot or less of cable to connect your panel to your RV. Well we're going to explain the issue now. Concept 5. The longer the cable from the charge controller to the battery, the worse the charging performance. In practice, the cable from the charger to the battery should be kept as short as possible. In the first scenario, let's see what happens when somebody uses a 10 foot long 10 AWG cable to connect their RV to their solar panel. And for this exercise, I'm going to the voltage drop calculator page on my website. This will tell you how much voltage you will lose over a given wire size and length of wire, depending on how much current goes through the wire. So we're going to go with a supply voltage of 14.4 volts and we want a circuit length of 10 feet and if we solve this for a 100 watt solar panel we're looking at let's say 5 amps and we're going to use 10 AWG wire calculate and we see we actually are dropping 102 millivolts 
And now let's look at the second scenario. Let's say we had an RV owner that found a 50 foot length of 12 gauge extension cord and they just lopped off the ends and installed MC4 connectors on it. Let's see how that works out. This time we want 50 feet for the circuit length. We're still using 5 amps and now we change from 10 to 12 AWG. Let's calculate this one. Now you see we have 827 millivolts. That's almost a whole volt. So we have a significant voltage drop here. So to recap, for a 100 watt solar panel using 10 foot of 10 AWG wire, we have a 100 millivolt voltage drop, which isn't too bad. And for 50 foot of 12 AWG wire, we have an 800 millivolt voltage drop, which is pretty severe. And if you introduce such a large voltage drop, the charge controller is probably not going to output the maximum current that the solar panels are capable of. So you're going to have poor charge performance and it's going to take longer to charge your batteries. If we refer back to our charging diagram, if we have a voltage drop issue, we cannot get the maximum current into the battery. And so the current will be depressed as we show in this example, which means the battery cannot be charged as fast in the bulk charge state the battery charger will never be able to match the maximum current output of the solar panel. So guess what? That 200 watt solar panel you just bought, you put a 50 foot long 12 gauge wire on the charge controller, you're never going to get the charge performance that you paid for. Once the charge controller finally gets out of the bulk charge mode, the charge current drops and then things go back to normal. The absorption charge and trickle charge are still the same because then there's not as much voltage drop issue in those charge modes. Concept 6. If the voltage drop is severe, you will not obtain the maximum charge current the solar panel is capable of producing. But you say 10 foot is not far enough away. That is just not practical. I need 25 foot. And I don't want to spend the money to have to buy 4 gauge wire or something crazy like that. Well, fortunately, there are some solutions. The Victron series of smart charge controllers. They produce a dongle that's about a $40 add-on to their line of smart charge controllers. And it monitors both battery voltage and temperature. And from a Bluetooth signal, it sends that back to the charge controller. This allows the charge controller to modify the voltage so that you have the proper voltage at the battery. One more option we want to look at is the location of the charge controller. Now when a panel is putting out the maximum amount of energy it can, it's going to be producing about 18 volts DC. That goes to the charge controller and depending on the charge mode, it's going to drop that voltage down to something less. So in this example, we show it's in bulk charge with 14.4 volts DC. Then by the time it goes through 50 feet of 12 AWG wire, then it's going to be dropped down to 12.7 volts, which of course reduces the charge efficiency. But what if we decided to put the charge controller next to the battery? And remember we said for any battery charger, you should keep the leads between the charger and the battery as short as possible so you can minimize any voltage drop. Well, this works here too. So again, 18 volts coming out of the solar panel and it goes through the 50 foot of 12 AWG wire. We end up with 16.3 volts at the input to the charge controller. But the charge controller only needs a couple volts more than what it outputs. We actually have spare voltage available here. So even though the input to the charge controller is only 16 volts, the battery is going to get 14.4 volts. This is actually probably the solution for most people, and this is exactly what the rooftop type solar panels do. But of course, it does defeat the purpose of having a portable suitcase kit, because it's no longer portable. You have to plug it into the charge controller that's in the RV. So I've presented a lot of theory in this video, and I've shown a couple different methods of how to minimize the voltage drop issue. So now you know the why, next we're going to go to the how. We're going to go on to the next video and actually install the charge controller in different locations.